Hey everybody, it's Jason again with Herco Applications. I hope by now you've all had a chance to watch our first two videos that dealt with the basics and editing and drawing in a DXF, in the DXF editor. Uh, in this video, we're gonna go through a quick run through of working with the 2D and 3D DXF. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, I've already created my blank conversational program. So I'm gonna go over to the graphics side and we're gonna go ahead and import in a DXF file. I'm gonna go through, or not go through as much detail in this video as I have before. So if you do have any questions, please refer back to those previous videos. I wanna go ahead and open the DXF file that we worked with in the previous videos. And the first thing that I'll do is go ahead and get rid of some of these unnecessary layers that are kinda of gonna get in the way of what we wanna do here. I'm going to go in and make sure that we can see our geometry. We'll make that the active layer. And I'll make sure our default layer and simulation layer are, are all on. And as you can see, this is a 2D DXF file, uh, only a two-dimensional DXF. Um, so we'll go ahead and show you how you work with that. The most important step with any DXF, whether it's 2D or 3D, is make sure that part zero is where you want it on that part before you start to create geometry. So the first thing that we wanna do is we're gonna put our part zero right on the corner of this part. And to do that, I'm gonna utilize the move part zero and my snap options or the snap object here. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell it I wanna move part zero and I'm gonna turn on my snap object and I'm gonna look for an endpoint to make sure I get right on the end of that line, putting my part zero right on the corner of the part. So now we're sitting with just the geometry that we wanna cut on the screen and part zero sitting where we want it. So we are basically ready to start selecting geometry to create this conversational program. The first thing that I wanna do, or I wanna create is this center geometry, this kind of circular pocket. I'm gonna select this and tell it I want that to be a pocket boundary. We wanna pocket all of the material out of the center of this geometry. So I'm gonna go ahead and use my select pick tool I'm gonna make sure that my multi-selection and chain selection are active. And I'm just gonna go ahead, I'll cancel my snap, and we'll select that geometry. You'll see it highlights the entire uh, contour because I do have the chain selection on. Now that I've done that, I'm gonna go select the data block that I wanna create in the create block section. I'm gonna create a contour, uh, and it is going to ask me to select for the top of the part. Uh, down here in the conversational area. This is an optional step and something that we're not gonna do on a 2D DXF file. So we'll just go ahead and hit the green check to approve this. It then wants us to set the direction of this contour. I'm gonna go ahead and set that in this counterclockwise direction. I'll approve that and it tells us that it inserted that block into the program. If we take a look at the program, you see that it definitely created that block for us. Since this is a 2D DXF file, we are gonna to have to give it the Z start and Z bottom that we wanna use, as well as the tool and what our milling type is or our cutter comp type. I mentioned we wanted this to be a pocket boundary. So we'll go ahead and draw that. If we take a look, you can see that we do have the pocket as it was drawn on the DXF. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear my graphics. Uh, the next thing that we wanna do, this geometry in the center, we actually wanna turn that into an island or material left standing in that pocket. So to start with, I'm just gonna go ahead and select the geometry just like we did on the outer boundary. I'm gonna tell it we wanna create a contour. Again, I'm not gonna worry about the optional Z start and my directional arrow will set that and then approve. It tells me the data block was created. So if I go back into my conversational program, you can see we have block two. Uh, since this is just gonna be an island, I simply need to set that to pocket island and go ahead and run my graphics. Now you can see we are left with material standing in the center of that boundary. So our milling operations are essentially done for this program. I'm gonna go ahead and clear my graphics back to an XY view. And now we're gonna go ahead and select 
some of these holes. Uh, I'm going to do these smaller holes in the center first. And to do that, I think I'm going to utilize the filter circle radius feature uh, up here in our select options. So I'm going to go ahead and first select one of these holes and use the set R or set radius feature to go ahead and set that 0.1875 radius for me in my filter. So when I turn this on or check or select that uh, checkbox, I am now only looking for geometry with a radius of 0.1875. So if I use my select box, select the entire part, it's only going to select those holes for me. I'm going to go ahead and select a location holes data block here. And although this is a 2D DXF, it is going to give me the option if I choose to, to set my Z start and Z bottom right here in the DXF editor. You can choose to do this here or in the conversational data block, whichever one you prefer. I'll go ahead and set it here. I know that we've pocketed this floor out to minus half inch. So I'm going to start at minus 400 thousandths for my Z start. And I'll go to about 950 thousandths for my Z bottom. And I'll go ahead and hit approve. <clears throat> it's now giving me the option to edit that one more time for the Z bottom. I'll just go ahead and approve this as well. And now it's asked me to select the first hole to be drilled. I could either select a different hole or just go with the hole it has selected. I'll just go ahead and approve to go ahead and use that hole here. So if we go back into our program, we now have a holes block. <clears throat> All I need to do is go ahead, select a tool that I want to use, and we should be good to go. If I wanted to add a center drill or additional cutting uh, operations to this, you know, it's the same as if I created this block myself. So if I wanted to add a center drill, I can come in here, just tell it I want to insert a hole operation. We'll select center drill. Give it a Z start, a Z bottom, and we'll go select our center drill. Now when I draw this, <clears throat> I should have the milling operations completed as well as the holes that we just created. So in this part, we just have four more holes to select. Put it back in an XY view. I'm going to turn off my filter circle radius. And I'm just going to go ahead and select these four holes uh, individually. And on this time, I think I'm going to go in, instead of using the uh, location holes, I'll go ahead and use the pattern holes to show you the difference between the two options uh, when creating a holes block. So we'll go ahead and select that. Again, it's going to ask me for the Z start and the Z bottom. I'll go ahead and approve that a couple times for the Z start and the Z bottom. Uh, the first hole location, I'll go ahead and approve that as well. <clears throat> Now, if we were to take a look at our review screen, you'll see that not only did it create the holes block, it also created a pattern block and a pattern end. So we can now add geometry to this if we need to. I'm gonna start just by completing the holes. So we'll go ahead and it looks like I may have mistyped when I was in the DXF area. So I'm just gonna go ahead and edit this right here to give it the Z bottom that I intended. And we'll go ahead and select, these are half inch holes. So we'll select the half inch drill. And if I draw, we should have, at least to the DXF file, a complete part. Uh, since we did use the pattern method on these holes, uh, let's say that we decided we needed a counter bore on all four of those holes. It's as simple as going in, inserting a block inside of the pattern. So I'll just do insert block before, and we'll just add a simple circle to this. So I'm just going to do an 800 thousandths diameter hole, uh, going 400 thousandths deep. And we'll just do an inside comp. So now you can see <clears throat> when this draws, by adding that one circle block inside the pattern, we now have four 
counter bores on this part. So the only thing left to do on this part would be to go do your part tool setup and start cutting this part. So let's show you how you do a similar uh, operation with a 3D DXF. I'm gonna go ahead and clear out of everything we've done here. I'm gonna go start a new conversational program. <clears throat> and now I'm gonna load in a 3D DXF file. For the most part, this is gonna be very similar as a 2D DXF. There's just a couple more things to keep in mind when working with a 3D or three-dimensional uh, DXF file. So here, here you can see we definitely have a, a 3D DXF. Um, the first thing that we want to do is create this outer contour. So the, the first thing we'll talk about is how do we want to select that? There's a couple different options on how we want to select this. Um, <clears throat> you'll notice if I go to select this, if I select on the arc or this, this large radius here, it's going to go ahead and select that entire contour. On the exact same geometry, if I were to clear this, and let's say I select on this line here, you'll notice it's going to ask an additional question. Um, it's going to ask me, do I want a line that is connected to this vertical line here or this curve down here? Uh, essentially, with a line, there's not enough information for the control to figure out what plane you're coming in from. So it's going to ask an additional question just to make sure it gets the correct contour or the contour that you're wanting. So I would just simply select that curve, hit select, and then it would highlight that contour for me. So typically, um, if you can, the easiest method is going to be selecting an arc. Uh, but keep in mind that the segment you select will be the start point of your contour. So if you're okay with your contour starting on this radius, you can go ahead and select that and let it select the entire contour. If you want it to start on some other feature, let's say over here on the end, you would just have to select that segment first and then select one other feature so it knows what plane you're working on with this DXF contour. Uh, since we have, have everything highlighted here, I'm going to go ahead and tell it I want to create a contour. It is now asking me to select the top of the feature for the Z start. Since we do have a 3D DXF file, it can now extract that information as well. So I'm going to go ahead and turn on my snap options and we'll just select something that's on the top of the part to make sure I get the, the top of this geometry. Go ahead and say OK to that. You can set your directional arrow. And then once you have that set, it will create the data block for you. <clears throat> You'll notice now it brought in my Z start and my Z bottom. All I have to do is tell it what tool I want to use. Um, and this brings up another, another thing that I kind of want to look at here in the DXF file. I know that I have a couple internal radiuses here. So before I go selecting a tool, I want to, I want to find out what those radiuses are to make sure I select a tool that's small enough to successfully cut those radiuses. So I'm going to turn off my chain selection and multi-selection. With just my select pick tool active, if I select on this geometry, it's going to tell me at the bottom of the screen that this is a quarter inch radius. If I select on this one here as well, that is also a quarter inch radius. So I know as long as the tool I select has a radius of a quarter inch or smaller, I should be successfully able to cut this, um, this geometry. We'll go back into our contour. Um, we happen to have this tool number 100 here, I believe is a 12 millimeter in mill, that should work fine, it's smaller than our half inch diameter. So I'll go ahead and select that and tell it we want to cut on the left side. So this looks good. Uh, one, uh, one thing I would like to mention while we're in here, if you happen to select your geometry and you forgot to set your directional arrow, um, we do have a way of fixing that without going back and reselecting your geometry. So just for uh, example sake here, if I wanted to reverse the direction of this contour, if I go into the contour, highlight contour start, we do have this option here for reverse contour. So I'll go ahead and select that. Now when I draw, you'll notice we are now cutting on the inside of this geometry. So it basically just took our geometry and reversed the direction just 
like we had switched the directional arrow in the first place. Uh, not exactly what we want here. I want to cut on the outside, so I'm going to go put that back. Just tell it to reverse the contour, and we should be back to a nice climb cut on the outside of the part. So that uh, outside contour is done. Let's go ahead and create this circle in the center. We're simply going to go in, select the bottom so we get the depth. Tell it I want to create a circle. It's going to ask for top of the part. I usually like to do that with my snap on to make sure I get the top feature or the top of the part. I'm going to say OK to that. Tell it what tool I want to use. And that we want to do a pocket boundary. So now we have a complete conversational program uh, that came from a 3D DXF file. I hope this quick run through of both the 2D and 3D DXF options uh, were beneficial. Uh, please look for future videos on more advanced topics dealing with the DXF, 3D DXF, and solid model import. Thanks for watching.